Okay, so the next topic is rigid body kinetics. Okay, so notice that this word kinetics is different from kinematics. Uh, kinetics means a uh, relation between forces and motion. Kinematics means essentially the geometry of motion. We don't really talk about uh, uh, forces when we talk about kinematics, but the word kinetics means forces plus motion. Okay. Okay. So, what are the uh, uh, primary equations in rigid body kinetics? Here they are. So, imagine we have some weird shaped rigid body with a whole bunch of forces. So, let's say we have force F1, force F2 or some other force, F3, maybe there is some moment, M1, these are all vectors, uh, another moment about this point, M2, etc. right? So you have a whole bunch of them, and we have the center of mass, let's say, let's draw it like this, we usually draw the center of mass like this, um, and let's call that point G. That's the center of mass G. Um, the two main equations are as follows. One is essentially the same as uh, the so-called Newton's second law. And what is this equation? It's the sum of all forces. Um, this is sum of all forces on rigid body. Equals mass times acceleration of the center of mass of the rigid body. Okay, so this is the mass of the rigid body. And this is the acceleration of G, the center of mass. of the rigid body. Okay, uh, this equation, sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration is applicable only for the center of mass G. It is not applicable to any other point. It does not matter where the forces are applied. All the, the, the main equation is that the sum of all forces, wherever they are applied on the rigid body, equals mass of the rigid body times acceleration of the center of mass of the rigid body. Okay, so it does. Uh, if you apply a force at a different point, it doesn't say anything about the center of uh, the acceleration of that point. Rather, it's always sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration of the center of mass. Okay, so that's equation number one, which is essentially Newton's second law. Um, like we've discussed in the past, it's a highly accurate equation. Um, and the approximations are due to relativity and uh, quantum mechanics, I guess. So that's Newton's second law. That's the first equation. 
and, and we said there are two main equations. The second equation is sometimes called Euler's equation. And it is, it is the rotational analog of this equation. It's essentially the rotational analog of this equation. You replace forces with sum of all moments. You replace the sum of all forces with sum of all moments. You replace the mass, m, with something called the moment of inertia. And you replace acceleration with angular acceleration. So let me write that equation down. So let's say sum of all moments. Um, and then when we say moments, it needs to be about a particular point. Forces are just applied at various points. Uh, moments, you need to specify about what point the moment is uh, being computed. So we say uh, moments about point G, the center of mass, equals I G alpha. Okay, so this is uh, equation number two, or basically called Euler's equation. We can write this as Ig. Uh, if alpha, if it's a planar problem, then we can say alpha k or something like that. Okay, where um, this thing is sum of all moments. about center of mass G um, IG IG is the so-called mass moment of inertia about an axis through G. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. And alpha, of course, is the uh, angular acceleration. Okay, so we will see examples of how to use uh, both these equations, namely uh, the so-called Newton's second law, which is essentially F equals MA, and Euler's equation, which is sum of moments equals I alpha. Uh, and we'll be using this over and over again for the rest of the course to solve various problems that involve the motion of rigid bodies um, that have various forces and moments perhaps being applied on them. Okay. So let me briefly elaborate on a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I want to elaborate on is the moment of inertia. Um, so let me give some examples. This is again called the mass moment of inertia. If you have uh, some object like so, and you have some point G, and you take some um, uh, element of uh, some differential element which has mass dm, um, and the distance between G and that point is r, or something like that, then IG is basically the integral over the whole object of R square dm, okay? Um, I'm not going to derive the moment of inertia of various quantities, but I want you to know that this is a different quantity. This is a different...
different from the area moment of inertia from uh, mechanics of materials. Okay. This is, this is a different quantity. They're related, but let's not talk about exactly how they're related for the moment, but I would like you to know that they're diff different quantities. Um, and uh, you will sort of learn about this other area, moment of inertia and mechanics of materials uh, uh, in uh, specifically in, um, in beam bending. But I would like you to know that this is different from it, okay? So uh, let's uh, not confuse the two. Let me just give uh, some uh, examples. If you had a ring, this is a ring. with uh, center of mass G, radius R, where mass m radius r so if you imagined um, a ring with an inner radius and outer radius basically what we are saying is that r inner approximately equals r outer equals r or something like that uh, for such a ring because all the mass is exactly at a distance r all the mass is at a distance r from the center, uh, it's basically m. Uh, it's basically m times r square. Uh, so the uh, moment of inertia is m r square. So that's the moment of inertia for a ring. Okay, I'm just uh, giving some examples. Um, this is not meant to be a rigorous proof of why the moment of inertia is m r square. Um, okay, so uh, so that would be, this would be a ring of infinitesimal thickness. If you look at uh, a disk, again of mass m, radius r, Okay, so, I don't know. So disk like that. Um, then the moment of inertia, I'm not again proving it. Uh, it's actually equal to m r squared divided by two. Uh, example three. If you had a uniform bar of length L and mass M, uh, but um, say infinitesimal height width. In other words, this dimension is very small. 
uh, then IG equals M L square divided by 12. Okay, so these are um, some common, these are some common moments of inertia. I've just given them to you. You're not necessarily uh, uh, asked to remember these things. We will give you these formulas uh, on the exam. Uh, we will give you the moments of inertia. Uh, we're not really going to ask you to derive these uh, things. Uh, but something else you want to remember is that if you want, uh, sort of just like what you learned uh, for area moments of inertia, perhaps, if you've already uh, gotten to that point in that course, uh, there's something called the parallel axis theorem. This allows you to compute the moment of inertia about a different point. if necessary. So um, the idea is that if you have some rigid body and there is point G and there's some other point P, then the idea is that I P, this is moment of inertia about point P, equals I G plus m the distance gp square, okay? So it's basically a uh, moment of inertia about p equals moment of inertia about g plus m r square, or m distance between the two points square, okay? So that's called the parallel axis theorem. Um, so what have we done so far? Um, let's just review it. We, we are calling this rigid body kinetics. It's different from kinematics. We are trying to understand the relationship between forces and motion, but now for a rigid body as opposed to a particle. Um, the first primary equation is, call, is basically Newton's second law, but uh, for rigid bodies, it says the sum of all forces, wherever they are applied on the rigid body, equals mass times acceleration of the center of mass of the rigid body, which is a very special point. And uh, the second equation is the so-called Euler's equation, which is the rotational analog of Newton's second law. It says sum of all moments about the point G, which is the center of mass, equals the moment of inertia about G, times angular acceleration. The moment of inertia IG is, is the rotational analog of mass of rigid body. If mass kind of quantifies how hard it is to accelerate a body, higher the mass, more the difficulty to accelerate a body. In other words, you need a more force. Similarly, moment of inertia quantifies how hard it is to angular accelerate a body. Right? So it's exactly analogous to it. Um, okay, so and then we uh, looked at uh, moments of inertia for a few standard objects, like uh, the ring, uh, the disc, uh, uh, uniform bar. Uh, you will find that most of our problems will, will fall under one of these three categories. Um, but whenever we... Uh, for most of the problems, we'll probably give you the moments of inertia so that you don't have to compute it. Uh, there's also the so-called parallel axis theorem that if you need to compute the moment of inertia about some other point, uh, then we can use IP, which is some other point, equals IG plus MGP square, where GP is the distance between points G and P, okay? Um, that's a parallel axis theorem. Um, so, uh, there's another quantity called, um, let me... Uh, give you a couple of more concepts. 
another quantity called radius of gyration. Um, of a rigid body. Uh, by definition, uh, so in some problems they may give you this thing called the radius of generation instead of uh, uh, the moment of inertia and, and uh, what you would uh, do essentially is uh, uh, by definition, Ig equals mass times radius of gyration square. Okay, so that's about it. Um, and the last thing I want to say has to do with uh, the so-called Euler's equation. So if you want to take moments about the center of mass, you use this equation, which is sum of all moments about the center of mass equals I alpha. Um, but sometimes you may want to take moments about a different point, just like you did in, sta in your statics uh, uh, courses, just like we did uh, early on in this course when we are doing sort of uh, taking moments about points. Uh, so there's a version of Euler's equation for different points. Uh, let me write that down. More useful version of Euler's equation. So original, let me write, rewrite the original. Original is sum of all moments about G equals I G alpha K. Okay, this is moments about G, taking moments about G. Um, taking moments about a different point, So if you want to take moments about a different point P, then it turns out the sum of all moments about that point P is not in general equal to IP alpha. It turns that would be convenient if it was just equal to IP alpha, but it turns out that is not generally true. It is often true for, uh, it turns out, uh, the problems that uh, you guys will experience in, the, in this course but it's not in general true. Let me write down the general equation. It's actually Ig alpha k plus R G with respect to P cross M A G. Okay, so this is, let's call this equation number three. Uh, this is the version uh, that we want to use when we are taking moments about a different point. Uh, if point P is fixed on the rigid body, and does not move, Uh, then we do have sum of all moments about P equals IP alpha K. Uh, so, but, but in general, this is not true. So there's a few other situations where this happens to be true, uh, not true in general. But this equation this equation is general, at least in 2D, okay? So the equations that we want to use are Newton's second law, 
Euler's equation in the form sum of all moments about g equals i alpha, where i is about uh, g. And then if you want uh, a version where you're taking moments about a different point, then we go uh, sum of moments about um, uh, some other point p equals i alpha plus uh, this thing, OK? Uh, and then in some special cases, when the point P is fixed on the rigid body and does not move, in other words, the fixed point, then we can use this version as well. Okay, well, we can write this um, like that. Okay, so we have four versions of the equations. Uh, this, equa this equation, equation number three, is most general because it allows you to take moments about any point. Uh, note that all these equations that I've written down are 2D equations. Uh, I've implicitly made assumptions regarding angular acceleration being only in the k direction. So that's a 2D assumption, two-dimensional assumption. So if you want to do real 3D dynamics, then these equations change a little bit. Let me not, let's not talk about that um, sort of beyond the scope of this course. Okay, so that's uh, this class which has to do with uh, rigid body kinetics, specifically planar or 2D rigid body kinetics, 2D rigid body kinetics, or planar rigid body kinetics. Okay, so on the next few videos or lectures, what we will be doing is essentially using uh, these equations over and over again, draw free body diagrams and using these equations over and over again, this, this equation as well. Uh, to solve various problems involving the motion of rigid bodies, which now includes not only translation, but also rotation, okay? So I guess that's the end of this lecture.